Hey y'all, this is Sandy about to do a, another video for you on um, some contract to close stuff. This one, I'm going to go over the buyer to do list. I have a checklist and this will be in our workplace group under the files, um, or I can also send it to you if you like, just shoot me an email, drop me an email. This is a little list I devised to send to your buyer to let them know what's coming up once they go under contract. Um, it's for you and for your buyer, um, but just a little checklist so that they can know the sequence of events that are, gonna, that are going to follow. So let me go ahead and I will get started on that right now. Okay, you can actually take this and make up your own, but these are the basic tasks that are gonna come along um, for your buyer and for you. Now, first two I have is send binding contract to lender, send binding contract to closing attorney, which is a task that you as the agent can take, but your buyer can also send these to the lender and the closing attorney as well. Um, doesn't matter who sends it, doesn't even matter how many times you send it. Just, you know, I like to make sure because that's what starts the ball rolling. Um, submit earnest money to holder as per the contract. That's your buyer task. Remember, this list is for you and for them, but this is so that they know here's what comes next. And you can just review it with them on a Zoom, just like we're doing. Uh, you, you can help your buyer source the information for them, make sure they have the right information for submitting it, um, depending on who the holder is. Contact information, whatever they need. Submit documentation to lender as requested. As requested, and then I put a reminder on there for my buyer, do not open any new credit accounts. It is not uncommon for a deal to fall apart an hour before closing because the buyer has added to their credit and, and changed their score and then been, been not eligible for a loan. So remind that of them often because they're going to remember you're the level head in this transaction with your buyer and your seller, you're the steady Eddie. You're the one with the level head. You're the one that's this disinterested, you know, third party. So don't be afraid to remind them more than once because just because it's on this list and you told them and the lender told them, doesn't mean it's gonna happen. It might not happen. They're excited. They're buying a new house. They got through the inspection. They're measuring for a windows and placement. It is not unusual for them to be caught up in the emotion and in the moment and put a couch on the credit card. Um, so remind them and remind them often. Submit buyer information to closing attorney as requested. The closing attorney, once you go under contract and the closing attorney opens the file, they are going to send your buyer. They, the attorney should be copying you on this email as well, CCing you. Um, if you don't see a CC from the attorney, that might be your flag to follow up with your buyer and make sure they got a request from the attorney for their information. And it's usually some kind of form or online link or something where they want the buyer to submit a lot of their demographic information, name, address, um, and et cetera. So tell your buyer to be on the lookout for that email from the closing attorney. And that should pretty much happen just as soon as the attorney opens that file. Um, schedule the decorations, option selection. This is new construction. If your buyer is getting new in construction, as per whatever's in the contract, they are going to have to go in and do the option selection. Schedule inspections per the contract. I mean, whatever the contract says, you know, um, get that inspection scheduled right away because you want time to negotiate. I know the market's different right now. And in some cases we're doing right to inspect, but you still are on a timeline for that. So that should be, you know, the minute they go binding, they need to jump on that. Um, I put a dollar sign there so that I can remember to remind my buyer that this is an out-of-pocket expense. This is something you're paying out of pocket right now. Pay for the appraisal as directed by the lender. 
to your buyer, be on the lookout for an email. Um, and I follow up with my buyers because uh, did you get an email from the lender about the appraisal yet? Because the buyer is going to have to pay for that. Usually it's an online link before that appraisal can be ordered. So make sure your buyer knows that as soon as they get that email or that phone call or whatever it is from their lender to pay for the appraisal, they need to pay for it. Because remember, they are on a deadline for that appraisal. They are on a deadline for that appraisal. So heads up, everybody be looking for it. Um, if you want to find out if the appraisal has been ordered yet, ask your buyer first, hey, did somebody tell you to pay for the appraisal yet? If the buyer says, no, I haven't gotten anything, then you need to get in touch with the lender and find out what's going on. Another dollar sign there, and that dollar sign, of course, indicates this is out of pocket. You're going to be paying this out of pocket right now, not at closing. Schedule the walkthrough. For new construction, there's a kind, depending on the contract that you have with your buyer, there's a few different um, new construction inspections that go on. So, so they need to be aware of that. And so do you. Provide additional documentation as requested by lender. Uh, your buyer, um, and if you did a buyer meeting or some sort of buyer handout, you just need to remind them that, okay, now that we're under contract, the lender is gonna take a closer look at everything. They're gonna put you through underwriting and they're gonna start asking you for more documentation and information. You need to be providing that as soon as they request it. Um, because you are on a tight deadline to get that financing through. And here's the thing, and this is between you and me, um, Mr. Agent, Miss Agent, is that loan denial can be no fault of the buyer and the buyer not turning in documentation in a timely manner, that's the fault of the buyer if the lender is not ready. Remember, a lot of times lenders, and people that aren't you know, agents directly involved with a contract, They'll just say, well, we'll just extend it. Well, we'll just amend it. No, an amendment and an extension is a renegotiation of a contract. You know, it's not a given. And an amendment, nobody has to sign an amendment. Nobody has to agree. Just because you want to change something on the contract does not mean the other party's going to agree to that. So you can't take for granted that if you're not ready, you'll get an extension. So the Original deadlines always apply. Clear final loan conditions. Once the underwriter takes a closer look at them, there might be a few items that they want more clarity on or things that have to be paid or et cetera. Your uh, buyer needs to be on the lookout for any of those type of requests from the lender and they need to be handled as soon as possible, the moment they're asked. If it's a new construction, you need to confirm that the CO has been received or that it's on the way. And then get final loan approval. Once you get all those conditions cleared, everybody has what they need, you should be getting final loan approval, some type of notice, letter, or email from your lender that says, you're done, you got the loan. We just got to wrap up the paperwork. Um, then uh, at that point, the lender's going to ask you, right around this time, the lender's going to ask, your buyer to provide proof of homeowner insurance. And when the lender asks for that, you know you're, you're coming down the home stretch. Um, so that is that will come directly from your buyer's lender. Once the loan is finally approved, the lender is required by that new federal law from the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau to provide closing disclosures, not to be in confused with a closing statement or a settlement statement. A closing disclosure is just what it is. It discloses what all the costs are related to the closing. Um, the federal law, the TRID law, requires that the uh, buyer receive those 72 hours before closing. Um, and that document itemizes for your buyer what all the costs are that they're paying at closing. I believe it itemizes it for the seller as well, but your buyer will get the buyer's closing disclosure. They'll say the interest rate, the annual percentage rate, how much they're paying for per diem interest, how much for prorated taxes, 
HOA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The buyer has to sign off on that. They need to look at it closely. Uh, the buyer needs to sign off on that before they uh, can prepare the final documents for closing. The uh, preliminary, so look out for the closing disclosure and the preliminary, per, preliminary closing statement or settlement statement. That's the final, that's the one that the attorney uses to close out the file and get everybody paid. But the closing disclosure is a disclosure of all the fees and everything that the buyer and the seller are paying. The uh, buyer needs to sign off on that closing disclosure three days prior to closing. Um, they need to then, once that happens, you just want to confirm the closing day and time with the closing attorney. You and your buyer need to. Remember, this is the buyer's party, so it's whatever time works for them. Um, then you want to schedule your final walkthrough. I do mine on the way to the closing table. So they just do it the night before. If my buyer wants to do it the night before, that's fine. But I personally, Agent Sandy, am going to drive by that house and walk through on the way to the closing table. Just want to make sure the roof has not caved in. And there's not a flood, especially if the seller has been in the process of moving out. Um, there have been, I've had closings that have been delayed because of uh, the buyer's clean out was all left in the middle of the driveway. Oh, well, somebody's coming to pick it up. No, it needs to be gone now before we sign. Because remember, once that paperwork is signed and that seller gets their check, your buyer loses all their leverage. So please make sure you do that final walkthrough on the way to closing. Make sure everything's squared away. If your buyer can't make it, then you know you need to make it. Um, closing, you go to closing and then you move in, voila. Easy, right? Now, when you put it all down on paper, one, two, three, item one, two, three in a row, seems like an easy process, but it's a month long thing. But everything runs so much smoother when your buyer and you remember and know what to expect. And that's the big thing is knowing what to expect. Um, and that's what this list is, is really about. It's nobody has to check it off and send it in but it's just so they know here's what's coming. Here's what's, here's what's to look for. And you know, my list isn't real fancy and I'm sure you might could go on to Google or something and make it real nice and sharp looking, but um, it does make you look professional to provide this kind of information and tool to your client. You know, it, ha it helps them to feel confident that you know what's coming and they know what's coming. So anyway, as usual, let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you soon. As I said, I will upload this to the Bray Home Team Workplace Group um, the files. If you'd like me to email it to you, just send me an email. See you next time.